aspects, three aspects of the cross. There's many other aspects, but we're namely going to talk about three. First, we see Jesus as our substitute. Remember that. He's our substitute. He died in our place. Let me say that the Christian life, there's doing in the Christian life. There is doing in the Christian life, but the doing is not Christian, is not the Christian life. That's part of it. But really the Christian life is an exchange life. His life for our life. Quiet in here. But we got to be willing to let him ha have our life and we receive his life. So we could come to what Paul said, it's no more I that liveth, but it is Christ that liveth within me. But yet nevertheless I live. That's in Galatians 2.20. So remember, we, 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 come, we first start out in our Christian life struggling, trying this, trying that, working and doing this, going to win the world for Jesus. Strive, 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 and no peace, no rest. And we walk around like, you know, I don't mean ugly, but like we've been sucking on lemons all day. Get tired of sucking on lemons, don't you? <laughs> you what? You like lemons? He likes lemons. But don't look like it, you know, you know, okay, anyway. But we are supposed to, read, we're supposed to be living epistles read by all men. And, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to toot my own horn, but he that tooteth not his own horn, it won't get tooted. <laughs> I, the only thing I could do is share my experience with you guys, you know, because... Susan may sort of live a little different life than a lot of folks. But anyway, when we first started in our Christian life, and most of us did, we set out to try to do everything, didn't we? But then we had to learn that God had to do something in us. He'd done something for us. He became our substitute. He's doing something in us. It is God working in us, making us willing to do His good pleasure. We have to let God work in us now. We're not talking about eternal salvation here. We're talking about if you're saved, you're saved. When you die, you're going to heaven. But we're talking about being conformed into the image of the Son of God. You women, how would you like to have a husband conformed into the image of the Son of God? Don't shout me down now. That's You men, how would you like to have a wife <laughs> that's been conformed into the image of the Son of God? No hands? Yeah, you're thinking about when you get home. I, I know. Hey, hey. Thank you, Frank. Toot my own horn. But how many people have ever come up to you and say, you know, your life has convicted me of sin. Your very life caused me to want Jesus. Now, I've had that happen in my life many times. I give God the glory and the praise for that. Most of you know that I go, when I go shopping with Susan, I'm, I'm in uh, Walmart sharing Christ with people, giving out my cards on the camel. She's going to... I run out of I run out of those camel cards, so she's gonna run off one thousand for me, where I won't run off no more. But I tell you, I have such a great time in sharing those jokes, and then just slipping right in. I said, you know, sometimes I can look at people and tell you know Jesus. She, yeah, I know him. I can see it in people, and I haven't missed it one time yet. And I've done hundreds of people's like that. So I go around, wherever I go, I, I, I witness, even when I go to the bank, 
and they and they and I take care of my business. And I look over there, I say, I got something I want to ask you. They go, yeah. How do you hide a camel in the desert? How do you hide a camel in the desert? You don't know how you hide a camel in the desert? You want me to tell you? You camouflage in the desert. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You camouflage him. Well, you see, now we're just about buddies, aren't we, since we shared that together. I said, uh, and then I'll say, and then I say, why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? He's already dead. Huh? He's already, he didn't have any guts. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. You remember that one? Yeah. Hey, did you hear about the skeleton that ordered this big milkshake and a mop? You get it? Huh? Mop it up. All right, I could go on. But see, then you pull out your little card and the little booklets that we have back there. And many times I'll say to people, you're a Christian, aren't you? And they yes, say, yeah. Then I put my arm around them. Boy, we're getting cozy right there. I say, boy, it's wonderful being a Christian in it. You know, let me give you this little book anyway. You give it to somebody else, you know. But see, it's, it's, if, if God's people, see, our faith is energized when we share our faith. So remember that as we move along. Now, let's finish this right here. Christ is our substitute. But as many as received, there's that word again, receive him to them, to them gave he power. He gives power to those that receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read that again. Put that on the board. John 1, 12. But as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave, God gave, Christ gave, the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. What right do we have to be called children of God? I got news for you. Right there it is. He gave me the right. He gave me the, the authority. He gave me the power. Wow. That is, to those who believe and he to trust in and rely on his name. Oh, that's so powerful. Our, our substitute. This, you know, talking about the cross here, one of the aspects of the cross is that it was accomplished at Calvary. We know that. Now remember, he becomes our substitute. So, Mike should have died on the cross. Would you come up, Mike? Let's see if we can drop it a couple of nails in you. <clears throat> Willie, would you come up? <laughs> now, if, now, if you sin, you're going to have to die. You will die. But Jesus said, this is Jesus. I want you to meet but Jesus says, I'll take your place. Tell me you'll take your place. Take your place, Willie. All right. <laughs> he became your substitute. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you did it, all right. Yeah. Yeah, and you did. He He's the substitute. Wow. Now he's free. Thanks, Jesus. But you know what? Three days later. Woo! Glory. A little traveling music, yeah. Wow. See, we got to remember, we passed from darkness into light. Don't curse the darkness. Light your candle. We are the light of God. We are a candle. We are God's representative down here. Now, the sin question has been dealt with. Now, we were over here in darkness. We were lost. We were separated from God. We were in the kingdom of darkness. God took us out of the kingdom of darkness. Let us 
And when Christ was crucified, who was crucified with him? Raise your hand, everybody. We were all crucified. Everybody raise your hand. Uh, this is, this is, I'm a teacher. I like to, the, 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 you know, okay. Raise it high. Say, I died 2,000 years ago. I'm a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Free at last, free at last. Okay, you can put your arms down. Now, you might not feel, forget the feeling. It's a fact, okay? It's a fact. Now, let's finish reading that. You can change, change that to Romans 10, 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Now, look what it says on your little uh, piece of paper there. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... Now, no one can call Jesus Lord without the Holy Spirit. Remember that. So when somebody does confess, you know the Holy Spirit is operating on that individual and has done some work in that individual. And now they know by the Spirit of God that Jesus Christ is Lord, and, and then they confess, says, then they confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. Now remember, when they do confess, the Holy Spirit has showed them that Jesus Christ is Lord and has put in their heart, and now they believe that God raised him from the dead. And without the Holy Spirit operating in their life, they can say it, but nothing's going to happen. We understand that. That's very important. Some people do it without the leading or the operation of the Holy Spirit in their life. All right, so look what it says. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So you believe in your heart. You believe in your spirit, man. You believe on the very in, inside of, of, of the essence of your, your being, that you believe that, that God raised him from the dead. See, the Holy Spirit shows you that. Sometimes we hear people say, Eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of people what God has prepared for them. But they don't read no further. But he has showed us by his Holy Spirit. What you know, you will know by the quickening of the Holy Spirit. All right, look what it says. Thy shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made, notice this, made unto salvation. You enter into salvation by confession. Okay? What, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4.13 up there. 4.13. Now, we're not going to get through this whole thing, so don't worry about it, but you can do your homework. I like, now remember, have an envelope. Have a, well, you can keep these things. Go for them. Study during the week, okay? We, we spend a lot of money getting this stuff out, a, a lot of time. Now, look what it says. Yet we have the same, now Paul's talking. He says, yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had, first we want to know, a spirit of faith. Hmm. Faith must be a spirit. That's something. Then it says, as he had. Now, who is he? Well, that's where studying comes in. It's Psalms, I think it's Psalms 110. No, Psalms 116, verse 10. Don't put it up there. Show me probably wrong. But anyway, it's 110, somewhere right in there, in Psalms. We will find out that he is King David. So we have the same faith, Paul said, that King David had, who wrote. So somebody wrote something. We know that David, King David wrote quite a bit, didn't he? In, in Psalms, and, you know, he wrote some things in Psalms, definitely did. I have believed. David says, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. 
And Paul says, we too believe, and therefore we speak. So speak what you believe. Confess what you believe. Speak unto this mountain, it shall be removed. Now we know believing and faith and the power of God is all there with you. So speak who you are in God. Faith comes by hearing, but if you don't speak, ain't no faith coming. So during the week, what I do, I say, Lord, I thank you. Now I start speaking. Lord, I thank you that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Boy, I remember the time it was so hard for me to accept that. I was an evangelist for 15 years. And I just believe, you know, get people on conviction and just leave them there. <laughs> I never would go to verse to, uh, Romans 3.24. You know, uh, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The next verse, all have been justified. Woo! Put that on the board. Romans 3.23, and then we'll go to 24. Since all have sinned and all falling short of the honor and the glory which God bestowed and received, receives. How many have known that in the past? And you were a sinner. But then you pass through the cross and you accept what Christ did. You identify with his death that when he died, you died. That's it, identification. Now you're over here and put the next verse, 24. All are justified and made upright in right standing with God. How many has ever heard an evangelist go to the next verse? <laughs> huh? Just leave you in verse, the, the last verse. All right, they be, you believe that you were a sinner? Raise your hand. Did you believe that you were a sinner? Raise your hand. I right, will just wake you up. Uh, yeah. All right, do you believe that you've been justified? Raise your hand. All right, see, you've got to receive, receive, receive what the Lord has done. And we can sit in church and hear that all day long and don't receive by faith. All are justified, Paul speaking, again, just the next verse, all are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely and graciously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy, through the redemption, I love it, which is provided in Christ Jesus. So you are no more a sinner. I didn't say you can't sin. That's a matter of the will. You understand that? But if you sin, Psalm, I mean Psalm, that's a good one. I love Psalms. 1 John 1, 9, if you sin, if you confess it, God is unfaithful and, and you can't trust him to forgive you. Huh? Huh? He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all sin. But you're not a sinner. You, you're a saint that made a mistake or sin by an act of your will or just the temptation got a hold of you and you, and, you get, and you gave in, but there's still hope for you. Because the promise in the word of the Lord is, all right, if you did sin, you sinned, so what are you going to do? So what are you going to do when you sin? Confess it. Is God faithful? Is God just? To beat you up? Huh? Send you to hell right quick like. Put you on a jet and send you uh, the far corners of hell. No, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. How can you cleanse yourself? You can't. You depend upon the Lord. Now listen to this. I used to go and confess my sin, but I never received the cleansing. Never received the cleansing. So you walk around under condemnation and guilt. What's wrong, Bob? Oh, boy, it's rough. I ain't making fun. I've been there. Uh, what, 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 what happened? Well, I sinned. Okay, let's go to the Bible and see what the solution is. All right, we'll turn the page. Let's see. Turn the page. 
Oh, over here. If you've sinned, moaned and groaned for at least three weeks, show everybody you really, really are sorry. How many of you have done that? Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand. I know. Uh -huh. We all come from the same stump, Adam. But how many of you know? Adam, who's that? I'm in the last Adam from heaven now. I used to be in the first Adam. Oh, I still got the same body. See, that's, that's going to be taken care of later on at the resurrection. But see, my inner man, my spirit man, has been, listen, been recreated by the power of God when I accepted Jesus. Now, some of you just maybe accepted the Lord when people, you know, your spirit's a little baby. And the little baby, you've got to feed it. Feed it carnality. Feed it on a good study diet of TV. <laughs> and wonder why my baby ain't growing. When I was a kid, they always wanted me to eat collards. I couldn't stand collards. Collards in the morning, collards in the evening. Is there anything around here to eat besides collards? Yeah, we got some turnips over here. <laughs> I think I'll take the collards. <laughs> See, you've got to realize that you now identify with Christ. Yes, you identify as far as the old man is concerned, him on the cross, but he ain't on the cross no more. He's been resurrected. And he's in heaven, seated at the right-hand side of the Father, interceding for you and me. And therefore, we have a high priest that intercedes, and he's touched with our infirmities. He's touched with our failures. He understands everything about us, and he's pulling for us 100%. He says, I'll never leave you. He's given us his Holy Spirit to live in us. Now, let's get back to your paperwork here. Let's, let's go over that one more time. That's so good. All are justified. How many has ever heard, been, heard an evangelist preaching and ever brought that up? Huh? Yeah, you haven't. See, if you're still identifying with the first Adam, you're going to act like the first Adam. Do we understand that? See, you're still identifying with him. I'm just an old worm in the cabbage patch. Somebody else said, well, I'm just an old cabbage. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not accepting what the Lord's done for you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Just in case... you. You think I'm, 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 let's stop for a moment. Look at that now. You've got to let that word get into you. Look at all our justified, notice this now, and made upright. How many times have we tried to make ourselves upright? Do you see that? Look at that. And, and, up, and made us upright. Who made you upright? Right. Who made you upright? How many years was it you, you tried to make yourself upright? About 74. <laughs> <laughs> Who justified you? Who sanctified you? Who is sanctifying you continuously? Who's going to glorify you one day? Who's going to raise, who's going to raise, when, you, when this body quits breathing, Who's going to take your spirit out of this body and boop, you're in heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You don't want to take this body. This body couldn't stand the presence of God up there, man. Say, we're going to have a new glorified body one day. Can't wait. I tell you, I'll have hair like my brother over there. Probably let it, let it grow you know, long. When I'm on the motorcycle, it'll be... See, really, I, I don't want to discourage you, but I used to ride a motorcycle, and I think that's what happened to my hair. It blew off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
The Bible says we've not been bought with silver and gold or any corruptible things like that, but with the precious blood of Christ. The blood has not lost its power. I love that song. The blood has not lost its power. When I sin, there's the blood. My faith is in the blood and in my God to cleanse me by the blood of the Lamb. And I am what I am by the grace of God. Unmerited favor. That's God's goodness. Wow. The goodness of God. Mm. So a lot of people in the world are over here in darkness, in the kingdom of darkness. But when you're saved, he removes you from the kingdom of darkness and puts you into the kingdom of the Son of God. Now we are in the kingdom of God, the Son of God. And we're God's people on the earth. We're only passing through. This is not our home. Well, someone says, well, do they have biscuits in heaven? Do they have biscuits in heaven? I know when Justine gets there, there'll be biscuits up in heaven. <laughs> It'd be cake, too. All right, let's read on. So the first aspect we receive, notice this now. Everybody look at their little paper. Forgiveness, cleansing, peace, a new position. Our position in Christ now, no more are we sinners, but we're saints. Power, the presence of Christ, we are priests. We enter into the priesthood. Protection and justification. You can't get no more justified than you are right now. See, people, you, you got to accept your position in Christ. As you do, then God will deal with our shortcomings and our things that we've been practicing so long. You know, you pra over, over here in the kingdom of darkness, you, you practice something so long, and it's in your psyche, it's in your head, and you finally get, get this experience, and you identify with Christ now, and now you're a saint of God. But these things that's been impressed in our brain cause us, us to act many times like we did when we was over here. Everybody see that? That's why our minds are, uh, we have to be renewed in our minds. The Bible says we're transformed, how? By the renewing of our mind. I remember that came so alive to me. We, uh, my my uh, youngest daughter had four dogs. Can you imagine that? Four dogs. That was a big grocery bill. But we, uh, they went on a trip, so they, uh, we volunteered to uh, uh, keep one of the dogs. His name was Cal. Yeah, old Cal. I remember Cal. Yeah, yeah, good dog. For, for, for 10 days, yeah, we kept Cal. Now, Susan don't like dogs in the house. So that's why I sleep in the barn. I mean, uh, <laughs> forgive me. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> so cow would be in our, when you go in that one door of our house and cow now cow you stay right there don't you go in the other parts of the house you know miss susan don't, don't you the other part of the house now we're not mad at you but you stay right there and you look at me go okay so when i come in cow's there and i step over cow Go in the house, you know. I come out, get outside. I step over a cow again to get outside. For 10 days I've done that. I practiced that. Tammy comes home. Cow goes with Tammy. Next day I come in the house. I open the door, and I step over cow. I said, wait a minute, cow ain't there. What am I? But, you know, it took me about a week to break that habit of stepping over a cow who ain't there no more. How many understand what I'm talking about? See, we can 
what you practice, if you practice something long enough, if you practice the wrong thing, it's hard to break the wrong thing and get over here and start practicing the right thing. See? You understand that? Okay? So a lot of Christians have been practicing, you know, they were brought up in houses where people would argue and fight. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, really, just yell at one another. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine yelling at your wife? Now, you do that again and I'll knock your head off. Yeah, I'll tell my daddy on you and he'll knock your head off. Well, you think I'm scared of your daddy? You better be. He's an ex-Marine. Well, my daddy was in the Army. He still got his Band-Aid and it's sharp, too. Y'all think I'm lying. How many think I'm lying? How many think I'm telling the truth? <laughs> Talking to the right people. Of course, I know it was none of us, right? How many is guilty? Come on. How many is guilty sometimes? At a time, you've done that. Oh, look at that. I got a few honest people in here. I love honest people. What'd you say, son? How do you know I'm not being honest if I didn't do that? Sir? I said, how do you know I'm not being honest that I didn't do that? How do I know you're not being honest? Because I just might want to went over there and beat up her daddy. <laughs> We'll talk later, son. <laughs> when I first got married, I didn't know how to treat a wife. But Susan was so good. You know, there's that scripture in um, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. The goodness of God brought me to repentance. The goodness of Susan brought me to repentance. I'm telling you that right now. She would not argue. Here's her face. Two and two is five. Here's her face. Whatever. <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's five? <laughs> whatever. How can you argue with whatever? You ever tried to argue with whatever? And you... Bar off another shotgun blast at her, and she say, whatever. But then, at nighttime, now this is before I was saved, okay? She didn't like for me to, to bring beer in the house, but I liked my beer. Now, back in those days, we didn't have TV. It was the Long Ranger on the radio. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. North. And she'd go in the closet. See, her identification with Christ was so solid. And she would, she would tell God everything. She'd never tell nobody else. She'd tell God. Lord, Bob was mean to me today. I'm thinking, oh my goodness. She's telling God on me. <laughs> I'm telling you about... Six years, when I went down the aisle, it's don't, I know that God's hand was on my collar, and I was going down like this. And the preacher did give the altar call. He was making announcements. He looked at me, what do you want? I said, I want to get saved. That's what I want. And I got saved. Monday, look, a week before that I was drinking with the guys, I went back with my little Bible preaching Jesus. It's always been in me to tell the good news. I have to tell people, Jesus is Lord. He died for you. He loves you. I'm not ashamed. I can go into a whole bunch of, there's time Ed, when we go to a restaurant, there could be a bunch of people outside talking, and I'll get right in the crowd, and I'll like this. And they, and they just are talking. And then somebody says, sir, can we help you? And I said, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, how many in here knows how to hide a camel in the desert. 
And they all, oh, well, uh, uh, anybody? Y'all look like y'all smart folks. I know somebody here needs to know that. Everybody give up? I said, you camouflage him. Ah, yeah, that's a goodie. Then I give him some other jokes and all. And then I say, I've got a question. If you die right now, where would you go? And the, you could hear the, uh, the, the atmosphere crack. That don't move me. I'm in the spirit. I said, but you know what? Let me tell you how you get there. And I'll share the gospel with them. And many of them will listen. Some will walk on. Some of them will listen. I'll give them all. But before you walk on, I'm going to give you the track. When you get home, you can study this. See, you've got to be bold, courageous. There's a fear over the body of Christ. No, I'm not fussing. I've seen people that can't say one word or pray, and the minute the congregation breaks up, y'all love me? It's hard to love me sometimes, ain't it? Got one, I got one person on my side. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, listen, I ain't fussing. Something's wrong. Now, the problem probably is you've been practicing that so long, you just keep, <clears throat> and you're going to have to learn to identify with Christ and learn if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. Amen. So, look what we have here. Now, look at the second identification. My goodness, I can't believe. I'll, I'll let you go at 12. <laughs> second identification. Are you ready? Yeah. Knowing this. Knowing this. What do you mean knowing this? In the Bible, there's things that we can know. We don't have to guess at it. We can know. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. These things have been written that you might what? Know that you have what? Eternal life. You don't have to work for it, beg for it, cry for it, fast for it, run for it. It's yours when you accept Christ. And these things have been written so that you might know. I love to know where I'm going. How many of you have ever been on the highway and don't know where you're going? Where are we going? I don't know. Are we going east? I don't know. Are we going south? I don't know. Are we going west? I don't know. Are we going north? I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know. Do you know that you have eternal life? These things have been written that we might know that we have eternal life. I ask people the, that question many times. I said, do you have eternal life? They say, I hope so. I said, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you... It, that these things have been written that you might think, guess at it. No, I want to know where I'm going. Can you imagine that 150 people on that airplane? It took 10 minutes for that thing to go down. How many people do you think that were saved? I hope they were all saved. God will be the judge of that. But I'd like to be ready 24-7. Because the Bible says that the Lord is coming back for those that are looking for his appearance. Now, I'm going to just ask you a question. Are you looking for his appearance? Don't lie to me. Holy Ghost sees everything. I'm just challenging you. Are you looking for his appearance? Someone says, I'm looking for the next paycheck. Well, that ain't too bad. <laughs> but we are to live our life. I don't think anybody in the beer joint or out here raising Cain or living for the world is looking for Jesus. They looking for something else. But they ain't looking for Jesus. It's quiet in here. 
awful quiet. I can hear the brain of the sawdust up there just tur turning. <laughs> Are you looking for his appearance? Oh, my children, my children, my children. <sighs> Set our minds on things above and not things down here on the earth. I cannot believe the time goes by so fast when you're having fun. All right, let's finish this. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. And when was our old man crucified with him? Somebody tell me. When Christ died 2,000 years ago. Now, this is very important to understand that the old man, the old Adam, whatever came from the old Adam was crucified with Christ on that cross. And, when, and water baptism shows the death. We go down into water. That's the barrel. And when we come out of that water, we come out. That's a picture of what happened spiritually to all of us. That ritual doesn't do it. Before you go down into water, you better be saved. It's a spiritual thing, and the, and the water baptism just shows the picture that we died with Christ 2,000 years ago. We were buried with Christ, and when Christ was resurrected, we were resurrected to walk in the newness of life, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Well, how do you make that alive? How, how do you make that alive to yourself? How do you appropriate that? How do you come into that place where sin does not have dominion over us any longer? First, there's the knowing. Knowing, everybody say knowing. Knowing, knowing what? That the old man was crucified 2,000 years ago. Now, let's just say I'm over here, and let's just say a little jealousy comes up into me. So you're still in this body. Are you? Yeah, okay, just checking. <laughs> and that body can generate, a, like, jealousy or lust or uh, unforgiveness or bitterness or... But would you know how to handle it? Simple, not complicated. You reckon yourself to be dead. Let's just say, use one thing, jealousy. All of us has been jealous of somebody. I've seen preachers jealous of other preachers. Hey, he thinks he could preach better than me. <laughs> I'll show him. <laughs> oh, you see a lot of that in, 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 in the church churches. Can't stand it, hate it. But here's what I'm teaching tonight. Knowing this, that whatever is manifested from that old man was dealt with already at Calvary. And you wreck it and you count it as done and finished and complete at Calvary. It is finished. And the Holy Spirit, you activate the Holy Spirit to make that a real experience in your life. And little by little, the Holy Spirit will take that thing totally out of you. And you don't have it in you no more. Because you appropriate and identified with Christ on the cross. And you reckon that jealousy died with Christ. And it will not be in you anymore. Now, it might take a week or a month. I remember when I was trying to quit smoking. I'll have to finish on this. I'm just getting started, but we'll f finish it later on, next week maybe. <sighs> I'd smoke cigars, cigarettes, and I'd roll them in Susan's face. What, would, what is people that mean for? Of course, none of y'all were like that. Yeah, I know, okay. But I said, I got to quit, Yeah. Boy, I'm 82 uh, years old, and my lungs are good because God gave me a miracle. I whipped cigarettes in God. 
So here's how I started. Well, I won't buy anymore. So I didn't buy no more cigarettes. Now, at the air base, we'd have what you call about a 10-minute break. You could go out from the airplane, and the airplane was in this hangar, and you worked on it, and then you'd walk way over here, and, uh, and you'd light up your cigarettes. And there would be a cloud by, by day <laughs> and fire by night <laughs> over this people, you know, that smoking on their cigarettes. Say. Now, if you haven't broke that habit, I don't want you to be condemned, but, you know, get under conviction. That'll be good for you. So I'd, I'd go out there, and because uh, I'm not going to smoke, right? Because I'm, I'm going to whip this thing. And so I'm over here. And my buddy, he lights his cigarette up, and, and I'm uh, breathing in secondhand smoke. And they say secondhand smoke is worse on you than firsthand smoke. Okay. So that didn't work. So I get into scriptures. Finally, I realize, hey, that desire died with Christ 2,000 years ago. That's a habit. Like stepping over the dog. Got to light a cigarette. Do something with your hands. Put them in your pocket. You seen people do like this? But you see, that little desire for that cigarette was still in there. And then I come and realize, hey, the reckoning process. Oh, I wish we had time to go into Romans 6, that whole chapter for you tonight. So what I would start doing, I would light my cigarette up and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm dead indeed under cigarettes. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. I'm dead to these cigarettes. I died. This habit, this, this feeling, I, I thank you, Jesus. I reckon myself dead to these cigarettes. <sighs> I reckon, and, I, and I, for about two weeks I did that. And so I'll tell you what happened. Three weeks passed by. But I would trust the Holy Spirit. In one month's time, every time I'd light up a cigarette, Lord, I thank you that I'm dead indeed under these cigarettes. But I'm alive under God through Christ Jesus my Lord. So you, you, you deal with the negative and you bring in the positive. I'm alive unto God. And in, in, I would say six weeks, I didn't have no more desire to light up a cigarette. I didn't buy none, and I quit smoking, hadn't smoked one since. And that was back in the 50s. Boy, am I, I, see, I've been in the hospital with people that smoked, and I've seen them die. And there they are with the masks on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, God, what can I do with this guy? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. See, it's real. It's a real world we live in. Real people die because of cigarettes. Thousands die. Thousands die every moment, every second. People commit suicide. But I decided to light a candle. Now I had other things like jealousy. I remember one time, and I got to quit on this, Man, that night, I mean, the anointing was on me. I was casting out demons out of everybody. I cast out a few out of myself. I was hot, man. I mean, I was roaring under the anointing. My goodness and everything. So we closed down the service, and one of my elders come out and said, Though I may have the power to cast out demons, but I'm not to rejoice in that, but I'm to rejoice that my name is written in the last book of life. Somehow that just bugged me. How many ever been bugged? How many's ever been a bug? And I went home, and this jealousy, just this thing in me, just rose up inside. And Susan, I said, Susan, I got to walk around the block. It must have been about nine thirty. So I walk around the block. I thought, God, I thought I had delivered from that thing. Oh God, man, I tell you, I, 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 so you have. Have you ever had feelings like that? Thank you, and you're a human. I'm glad. Let me tell you what happened. God spoke to him. He said, you're going to moan all night, or you want to be delivered? I said, Lord, 
I want to be delivered. And so help me, this is what happened. The hand of the Lord came down. Out of my heart. And I was I was free. That's a miracle of God. God works in many different ways. Oh, I'd like for everything to be like that. <laughs> but I experienced that with God. Now, I didn't get very far on this tonight. But we got to learn how to appropriate the Word, speak the Word, and activate the Word where the Holy Spirit can take what we speak, speak what we believe, and apply it to our lives and deliver us from whatever. And I could go on and on and on with this message, but I know you're getting tired and you want to get home and eat some ice cream and cake. <laughs> I, I can't eat ice cream and cake. The reason I can't is that I don't have any at the house. <laughs> and that's how, and that's one way. Just quit buying ice cream, Susan. <laughs> I'm oh, just kidding. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you.